Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, with today being the actual one year anniversary of the release of Star Wars The Last Jedi, and of course, the feedback I got from my little, my little, this movie still sucks rant yesterday, uh, I, I got, uh, I, I got excited, if you will. And one of the reasons why I got excited was because some of the feedback in the comment section was fascinating. There was a comment that was made that kind of altered my perspective on The Last Jedi and the characterizations of, of the, the, the people who inhabited it, uh, how, how they were portrayed and how things did play out. And I kind of sat back and I thought, man, that's cool. That's a cool way of looking at it. Did it uh, change my opinion? No, 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 it didn't. The movie still, I mean, thematically, narratively terrible, but the way the characters were kind of matched against their polar opposites, I think was a fair way of looking at it and opened up my mind to viewing it from that perspective, which is the whole point of having these discussions to get the other person's perspective of it. Now, the movies are going to be a mess from here on out for a while, right? If 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 episode nine does not retcon a lot of the issues with episode eight uh, or do enough to move it forward uh, narratively to a proper conclusion that is satisfying for everybody, which let's be fair, that's not going to happen for everyone, but there's going to at least be some point where it's going to be manageable for everybody. I think at that point, uh, people are going to be okay with, with it maybe stopping right there for a while and that's at this point where things are, even though D.B. Weiss and David Benioff are currently working on an anthology series once they finish up season eight of Game of Thrones, which is currently only four months away from being released. And oh, man, that's going to be awesome. Uh, we got Ryan Johnson's supposed trilogy. I still don't think that's going to actually happen. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, but the Davy, but the Game of Thrones guys, definitely, I think they're going to still do their thing. But we do know the Boba Fett movie got put on hold uh, and def or put on hold indefinitely. Solo two, probably the same thing, which is unfortunate because I'd love to see a Solo two where he teams up with Boba Fett. I've already pitched my idea on that before. But ultimately, the way I view it's like this: television is going to be what saves Star Wars. Television is what's going to be able to do it. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, with something like, like uh, something as, as great as Clone Wars was, right. And, and us getting a actual proper conclusion to it, which some have just called fan service, but I, I, you know what, there's nothing wrong with finishing a story okay, as a way to kind of like help maybe mend the gap. If you will, you've also got rebels just having a solid finale and it being, it being beloved by the fans who watched it resistance while different in its approach, more cartoony, more anime based, still has a solid story behind it. Good characters, uh, good voice actors, and it's it's one that's developing its own fan fandom. Uh, and people are enjoying it there, getting those kind of smaller tales. But what I'm really referring to here is the Star Wars live action shows that are going to pop up on the Disney Plus service. Right now, you've got The Mandalorian and whatever the Cassian Andor show is going to be called. But make no mistake, if, if those shows do well, we will see a grip, an absolute grip of these types of shows. And I think ultimately... Ultimately, that's going to be probably the best thing for it, right? Now, the reason why I say that is because over on comicbook.com, they, they ran an article today that talked about, like, you know, potential plot details of the Mandalorian surface. It's not enough to warrant its own video, but it got me thinking because I was already on this particular subject matter in my own mind and this kind of added to it because the general plot of the Mandalorian at this point, at least what's being rumored, is that it takes place five years after the events of uh, the Return of the Jedi. Uh, potentially Sabine Wren from Re Rebels is going to have uh, be a character in that show, considering that she's also Mandalorian. And that's going to be interesting, uh, especially trying to find an actress who could portray her. Uh, that is going to be very interesting to see how that, how that plays out, considering that it would have been, you know, how many years after that? Like 15 years or so, somewhere in there? I think, I don't know the exact timeline uh, between Rebels and The Mandalorian. Uh, and then you've also got, again, the Cassie Nandor show. Uh, but I think that these are going to kind of do, I think these could possibly be, if I could compare it to anything, the, the Netflix shows for the MCU, right? For the Daredevil show, the Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, Punisher, those six shows. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be that kind of thing, but entirely under 
Disney's control and not segment it off to another network. I mean, obviously, Kathleen Kennedy is ponying up $100 million for John Favreau to produce 10 episodes of The Mandalorian that he will co-write and he will executive produce. Taika Waititi is directing, this, I believe, the season finale. Dave Filoni is directing the pilot. Bryce Dallas Howard is in there somewhere directing. And I wouldn't be surprised if Favreau himself came on to direct a couple episodes. This feels like it's going to be a labor of love and one that's aimed explicitly at the diehard Star Wars fan base, the fan base that feels kind of fractured over The Last Jedi. It's one that I look at as being the possibility of the future, and it's not in movies. It's going to be in TV. The problem with that is, though, will it be profitable? If 10 episodes of season one of The Mandalorian are $100 million, well, how much is Disney Plus going to cost everyone? How much is Disney Plus going to run us? We do know it's being made as a competitor to Netflix. It's going to be cheaper than Netflix. So I would say expect it to come in at around $9.99 a month to begin with. Eventually, over time, it's going to increase. But when that happens, when that happens, I mean, they're going to need at least 32 million people who get it in order for it to break even from what I originally hear. But if the Star Wars show is good, if the Star Wars show is really good, I think we're going to get that. I think when they pull off Solo, which hits Netflix next month, by the way, uh, in just a couple of weeks, Solo will go to Netflix. For those people who haven't seen it, who get the chance to, that will be yanked off before the end of the year. Uh, the Last Jedi will be yanked off. Uh, Clone Wars will be yanked off and moved over to Disney Play. And when all of that happens, uh, that's going to create a solid Star Wars lineup over there, as well as Star Wars uh, detours which was the animated series produced by the guys behind Robot Chicken, where they produced 32 10 to 12 minute long episodes similar to Robot Chicken with another 64 scripts already completed. All they have to do is just go in and shoot them. And it's all done using CG, so they could probably get it off the ground pretty quick. And Disney did, in fact, renew the copyright or renew the trademark on that. The way it's looking to me is with Disney backing away from movies, right? Giving us the end of the trilogy and then holding off for probably two years until whatever they've got coming out next after that, they're going to put all their energy, all their focus onto TV, concluding this Clone Wars, uh, you know, more resistance, you know, the, the Mandalorian, the Cassie and Andor show, uh, and then, and then bring in the movies over to Disney play, not, not the, well, not the, the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. Those are on TBS for another couple of years. Uh, unless they want to fork out the money to buy the rights back, which you know what? They might if interest in Disney play is 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 big enough. And TBS should probably take the deal anyway, walk away with uh, with a fair amount of change for literally doing nothing. But in essence of uh, just creativity and progressing the storylines forward and progressing the the universe forward. I do think TV is where it's at. One of the biggest problems with The Last Jedi was that the story felt too contrived for two and a half hours because it ripped off plot points from both Empire and Jedi. I mean, look, The Force Awakens ripped off plot points from, from A New Hope, but still was able to deliver it in a relatively good enough timeline uh, or length of time to be okay, right? Still work okay. Uh, the Last Jedi was all over the damn place and could have probably been a lot better had it been given more time to breathe and broken apart into two films. It's one of the reasons why I've argued that Episode 9 and Episode 10 should be two films in order to, or well, Episode 9 should be broken up into two films to be Episode 9 and Episode 10, uh, simply to give us more time to kind of get over what happened in The Last Jedi, to establish uh, a, a, you know, a, a, con a conclusive cliffhanger, right? And then and then go into the finale to end up the Skywalker saga instead of just giving it to us in maybe two and a half hours. Uh, that's what I personally want to see, but it's probably not going to happen because I'm not that freaking lucky. But at the end of the day, when I, I just look at what's coming down the pipeline for TV, I think that's what's going to save Star Wars. Elongated storytelling, good characters given the opportunity to be good characters, characters we can grow to care about, characters we can grow to love, characters we can grow to want to, to see transpire. And then maybe, just maybe, if we're lucky, those will be announced in the movies and those will be taken off into that direction. But I think that's where it's going to be. They're going to essentially have to take it back to its storytelling basics in regards to just television rebuild the brand off of that and then launch it back into space. And I think that's going to do well at this point in time. We've learned because we are really in the golden age of TV that you can have a lot of great storytelling and really high budget production value coming from television. 
I th- I personally think that that's what they're going to do and that that's what's going to work out really, really, really well uh, for them. Anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I leave it to you. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Let me know down in the comments below. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been Three Buck Theater. Please leave your thoughts and opinions. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I want to hear it all. Uh, you can also call into our voicemail line at 818-350-3281. That's 818-350-3281. Uh, please keep the, the calls to like about 30 seconds or less uh, so that I can get to more of them tomorrow on an episode of The Call-In. Anyway, my name is Matt Jarbo. Have yourself a great day, guys, and peace out.